Join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining me here in the broadcast. My Bible is once again open to Matthew in chapter 15. Matthew in chapter 15. We have been looking at uh, every day this week thus far on the question, how great is our faith? Or how will I know if I am a person of great faith? I want my faith to be great. I think you want your faith to be great. I want God to say, to think that my faith is great. Well, we all do, but how, how great really is our faith? We've been looking at a lady whose example we are using as a measuring stick, as a measuring guide to figure out, does our faith measure up to hers? Why are we using her? Because Jesus said she was a woman of great faith. Well, as you're getting your Bible open to Matthew 15, I have also been nudging you this week that it is time in the schedule of the calendar year, if you're one that likes to use gospel tracts in your Christmas cards, it is time for you to think and say, listen, I need to order my tracts to use in my Christmas cards. Now, Many times people wait to uh, the last minute, and I understand that. Mark Smith has sure, certainly done that on too many occasions on various things, but it really is helpful for our staff if you will order things in advance. Now, in a moment, I'm going to give to you a telephone number and an email address and so on that you can use to contact us, or you can wait to the end of the broadcast, and our mailing address will be given at the end of the broadcast. We have plenty of time for you to send us your request by mail. That's the good news. we got some time. But if you're one that likes to use the telephone or your computer, those methods will not be given at the end of the broadcast. You'll need to jot those ways of getting in contact with us. You need to jot those down now. If you've got a piece of paper and a pencil ready, you can telephone Bible Tracks by calling area code 309-828-6888. One more time, that telephone number is area code 309-828-6888. And as I said, you can use your computer. Our email address is, you just take the name of our ministry, Bible Tracks Inc., Inc. is short for incorporated, and you run those words together. Uh, again, that's Bible Tracks Inc. at the little at sign, then Juno.com. Juno is spelled J U N O dot C O M. Bible Tracks Inc. at Juno.com. Or you can go to our website, which is again Bible Tracks Inc. dot O R G. Bible Tracks Inc. dot org. Okay. I come here to Matthew and chapter 15. We want to hopefully finish up this passage of Scripture. We find here in Matthew chapter 15, beginning at verse 21, a Gentile woman, a woman who we saw on Monday's broadcast that she was involved earlier in her life as a pagan idol worshiper and probably involved in the occult. Her daughter is now demon-possessed, probably due to messing around with mom's religion, but she knows that Jesus Christ is the great emancipator of people. He frees people from their sin, he frees people from their sickness, and he frees people from their demonic. Uh, inhabitants. So she comes and he, she brings her daughter to Jesus Christ. And at the end of the story, Jesus says that, well, verse 28 says, a woman great is thy faith. All this week, we've been looking at the five tests that her faith has endured. Thus far, let me tell you what her, her faith has endured. The test number one was this, her great faith endures the test of trouble. Great faith endures the test of trouble. We saw that on Monday's edition. Yesterday on the broadcast, we saw test number two and test number three. Great faith, test number two, endures the test of unanswered prayers. Again, test number two is great faith endures the test of unanswered prayers. We also saw yesterday test number three. That is, great faith endures the test of dispassionate disciples. Again, test number three is great faith endures the test of dispassionate disciples. We started that one, and we didn't quite finish. I begin reading at verse 23. 
After she cries out for Jesus for help, verse 23 of Matthew 15 says, But he, that is Jesus, answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. Test number three, great faith endures the test of dispassionate disciples. These disciples wanted her to be gone. What was her trouble here? The trouble here was how other people viewed her. They viewed her as a nuisance and as a bother. What was her response? She continued to cry out to him. She continued to fulfill the very first we find in Luke 18, verse 1. The, Jesus spoke a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Well, test number four. The fourth test that she passed, her faith passed, was this. Great faith endures the test of heaven's rebuke. Let me say that again. Great faith endures the test of heaven's rebuke. Look at verse 24. And he answered, this is Jesus, answered and said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. Now, notice here, her test, her faith endures the test of heaven's rebuke. What was her trouble? She, at first, Jesus didn't say anything at all, but when he does speak, he finally spoke, but it wasn't very comforting. He rebukes her. He, in essence, is saying this, why are you asking me? You're a Gentile. You're not part of my mission. He said, Brother Mark, where do you get that? Well, look at verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto, except unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You're a Gentile. You're not an Israelite. I'm not sent to you. What does she do? What is her response to this? Verse 25 says, Then came she and worshipped him. Number one, she continued to worship. When she got silence, she continued to pray. When she gets rebuke, my friend, where else has she to go? She continues to worship. Have you stopped worshiping? Have you stopped going to the house of worship when the house doors are open for corporate worship? Shame on you. Get back in the house of God. My friend, you and I need to be worshipers of the true and living God. But not only does she continue to worship, she corrects her words. I Go back to verse 22. Look at what it says. When she cried out at first, she said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. She uses Jewish terms to cry out to her. That's why Jesus said, I'm not sent to you. You're using the wrong terms. You're using terms that don't belong to you. My friend, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, and you're asking Jesus to do all kinds of things for you, I, I'm glad you're praying, except God is not responsible to answer your prayer, because unless you know Jesus Christ as as your Savior, unless you've been born again, you're not his child. I've said many a time on the broadcast that my kids can ask me things that I, I will respond to, but if your kids came and asked before, I'm not responsible to respond to them because they are not my children and vice versa. This woman comes, she's coming using terms that don't belong to her. What does she do? She continues to worship, but notice in verse 25, then came she and worshiped and says, now, not Lord, son of David, but Lord, help me. She just comes and uses the very basic, if you use the word generic term, she comes and stops using the Jewish title, son of David, and she comes to the general title, Lord. That's a word any person can use because Jesus is Lord of all the earth. She was asking for Jewish mercies and they didn't apply to her, but she stops that. God's rebuke is always a time to check the basis of our approach to his throne. Are we coming flippantly, selfishly, demandingly, arrogantly, or are we coming humbly? She changes her words. She lowers herself and says, you're right. I have no right to use those terms. I come and just say, oh, Lord, help me. Oh, what a great prayer. Her faith endured the test of heaven's rebuke. We come now to the fifth and final test that her faith endures. Great faith, number five, endures the test of humility. Great faith endures the test of humility. Look at verses 26 and 27. But he answered and said, it is not meat or right to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. She said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumb which fall from their master's table. Great faith endures the test of humility. What was the trouble here? She was described and called by a very humbling, frankly degrading title. She's called a dog. What would you do if God called you a dog? 
You, if you're like Mark Smith, you get miffed and say, well, if you're going to treat me that way, I, I have the right to be treated better than that. You know what? She had every right to be called that because that was what she was. Let me stop right here. Many a person reacts badly to Jesus Christ and the cross. You know why? Because somebody's come along and told them and described them by the terms that the Bible describes them. You are a sinner. You're dead in trespasses and sin. You're on your way to a Christless eternity. You're without hope. You're without help because you have rejected Jesus Christ. And people say, me a sinner? You've got to be kidding. I'm a fine, upstanding person in my community. Well, you may be a fine, upstanding standing person in your community, but you're a sinner and you need Christ as your Savior or you are going to a Christless eternity. You're going to the place of hell and it's described by Jesus himself as a place of punishment that doesn't end and fire that's tormentous. Oh, my friend, if you're reacting badly because Jesus describes you as a sinner, get over it, get to the cross because the description fits you. This woman was called by Jesus when he, she heard these words come from his very lips. You are a dog. Was she a dog, a bow wow? No, but the description compared to the Jewish people, she was a dog. How does she respond to this trouble? You know how she responds? She accepts, she owns the title, and then she applies the title. She says, verse 27, truth, Lord, you're right. You're absolutely right, Lord, yet dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master table. She accepts the title, applies them to herself, and says, but you know, you know Lord, there's a way for dogs to even get fed. Jesus hears this, and he says in verse 28, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. What should we do with this woman's story? Do you and I see what great great faith looks like here? Has it been found? It's been found during a time of calamity, not calm, hasn't it? Our faith we measured during the troublesome times of our life. Do you and I, uh, did you write down the five tests that her faith passed? Did you write them down so you can evaluate your life? During your last episode and my last episode of trouble and trial and hardship, did our, great faith, did our faith measure up to great or was it little faith? Which of these five tests do you and I tend to fail at the most? Unanswered prayer? discouragement from others, being rebuked with truth, being humble before others, or do our uh, our faults uh, come and they trouble us and we just don't even come to Christ at all? What trouble are you and I facing right now and how are we going to respond in faith, with great faith, or are we going to re- respond with, with meager, meek faith that accomplishes nothing at all? Have you quit praying to God? Have you become angry with God? Have you gotten resentful with God because your trouble has shown a character flaw in you? Oh, my friend, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. My friend, I say again to you that that does not know Christ as Savior, the trouble you're facing now may be the very gracious hand of God bringing you to the place where you'll cry out to Jesus Christ who loved you enough to die on the cross, shed his blood, that you can be saved through his sacrifice. Believe on the glory today. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.